Hello everyone and welcome! In this video we're going to be talking about the VR6 engine and towards the end of the video, thanks to Mr. Humble Mechanic, we're going to be looking at a disassembled VR6 engine. Now, being developed by Volkswagen, the name VR6 has German roots, so the V actually stands for a V like a V-shaped engine, and the R stands for a German word meaning inline, so putting it together you basically have an inline V6 engine, uh, and actually this has more in common with an inline six-cylinder engine than a V6 engine, so we'll get into that. So getting into the logistics of how this engine works, here we've got a diagram looking down at the cylinder. This is basically a single block, and we've got cylinders one, two, three, four, five, six marked as it goes back. Now, the firing interval can be calculated for the number of strokes times 180 degrees divided by 6. That gives us a fire power stroke every 120 degrees of crankshaft rotation. Uh, that comes from my engine balancing video if you haven't yet watched that. The firing order, 153624. If you've watched my video on inline six-cylinder engines, then you'll notice that that is the exact same firing order. And that's because this is basically an inline six-cylinder with a little bit of a V put into it. So, cylinders one and six, cylinders two and five, and cylinders three and four will move up and down together in pairs, just like they do in an inline six-cylinder engine. So now let's look uh, a little bit more detailed at the head, cylinder head of this engine and talk about the airflow. And one of the unique things about this VR6 engine is basically how it gets away with a single valve train even though it's a V type engine. All the other V engines will have two valve trains, uh, basically two sets of camshafts for each cylinder bank. So with this you've got one cylinder bank with this split V and all of your intake air is going to come in on one side and all of your exhaust is going to come out on another side. So this one that I've drawn here is basically four valves per cylinder on a VR6. So you've got this intake channel here, which is going to feed these two intake valves. Those will open up, then these exhaust valves will open up, and all the exhaust can come out the other side. So you'll notice there's different length runners to each of these intake valves, depending on which location it's at. Now, how does the valve train work to control all of these different valves? Well, here's a side view looking towards the engine. So here we've got our pistons, and here we've got our valve train. And as you can see, you'll have one uh, camshaft on the left side, which will control all of the intake. And then you'll have a single exhaust camshaft on the right side, which will control all of the exhaust. So all of the exhaust valves controlled by one camshaft, all of the intake valves controlled by one camshaft. And so as this rotates, you'll see it will open up this side, and then you can have another cam lobe a little bit further down, which will open up the intake for this piston. So then you've got your exhaust doing the same thing on the other side, and they kind of cross over one another to control each different uh, cylinder. Now, older VR6 engines used a 15 degree angle, whereas the more modern ones are going towards a 10.6 degree angle. Another unique thing about the VR6 engine is the fact that it has a flat cylinder head. So the top of the block is actually flat all the way across, unlike V-style engines, and very similar to inline cylinder engines. So here, there's a couple ways you can kind of get around this. You can have slanted pistons, which is actually what's done in the Bugatti Veyron. So on the right side of the piston, the side that's on the outer portion of the V, there's actually a little bit more material than towards the center of it. You can also have asymmetrical flat pistons and just have kind of a strange looking combustion chamber. And that's also done and has been done on the older VR6 engines. So let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of the VR6 engine. Well, first of all, it's a very well-balanced engine. It's almost inherently balanced like the i6 because the firing order and the way the pistons are laid out is very similar. And so all the vertical forces balance out. That said, because it has that angle, the horizontal forces aren't going to be quite as balanced, so you will have some additional counterweight on the crankshaft to compensate for that. But they are very smooth engines. Also, you have one cylinder head, a single valve train, for dual overhead cams on a six-cylinder engine. So much like an I-6, you've got a single valve train unlike the V-6, so less complex. That's great. Uh, the exhaust exits on a single side, so as far as weight and simplicity, this helps out because you can have a single exhaust manifold rather than having two separate exhausts go all the way back out the car. You can kind of have more flexibility with what you want to do with it as it's all on one side. Now it's also, the packaging of it is quite good, so it's narrow versus a V6 and it's shorter in length versus an I6. So this kind of makes it ideal for front wheel drive cars, you can easily package it in there. Also, it allows for higher displacement than I-4 engines. I-4 engines are basically limited by their secondary imbalance. So by using a VR6 engine, you've got more displacement and you can create more power. Now, moving on to disadvantages. Versus an inline four-cylinder engine, it's going to weigh more and it's going to cost more, and it's also more complex. 
That said, it's less complex than a V6 because it's got that single valve train rather than two uh, camshafts on each cylinder head. Now packaging versus an I4, it is a little bit larger and you also do have a restricted bore size without making the engine enormous. So if you're looking at this, you have to realize that these cylinders are going to go down towards one another. So at the bottom of the block, these circles are going to be closer together. And so you have to have a certain wall thickness to allow for the strength and to allow for cooling to go within there. So basically, if you want to increase the bore size, up top it may look like there's plenty of space, but down at the bottom of it there's not going to be as much space. So to increase the bore size, you actually have to increase the overall width of the engine, and that makes it larger and heavier and more expensive and so on. So that's one of the disadvantages of this uh, versus, say, an inline engine or a V-style engine. So now we're going to head over to the Hummel mechanic, who is a Volkswagen technician, and he's going to show us an actual VR6 engine. Hey everybody, Charles from HumbleMechanic.com. As Jason said, I'm a Volkswagen technician. I've been turning wrenches on Volkswagens for about 11 years now. And uh, Jason just did an incredible job explaining all about how the VR6 engine works on his whiteboard. And we talked about uh, doing a little video collaboration, and this is what he came up with, was the uh, VR6. And uh, it just so happened that, as you can see, I have a VR6 cylinder head parked back behind me. Right down here, I have an engine block that I'll show you guys in a minute. And uh, we're just going to kind of walk through the actual real deal engine. And uh, this will be fun, a fun, fun topic. I'm a VR6 enthusiast. Right behind the camera, what you don't see is my 88 Volkswagen Cabriolet that actually has a VR6 under the hood. Um, now, this particular engine is a 2.8 liter AAA engine code out of a 1998 GTI. Um, it was <laughs> actually this particular one was out of a Jetta. Uh, the, the one in the cabbie was out of a GTI. It was, it was overheated and uh, the, the head's actually a little bit warped, so I didn't use it on the engine swap, but that's okay. It makes a great demo. Um, we're looking at the 15 degree V on this VR. Uh, this is actually the second generation VR6. The first one in the Corrado was distributor ignition. This is coil pack with spark plug wires. And then as we go on through the generations, we move to coil on plug. Uh, we also go to four valves per cylinder in the 3.2 liters, uh, like the uh, the R32 had, and then we move to the 3.2 and the 3.6 liter direct injection. Now, essentially, the block is the same on all of them. When you get to the uh, the direction the direct injection ones, we move from a 15 degree V to a 10.6 degree V, and uh, but beyond that, it's, you know, basically the same thing. The valve train does change quite a bit through the generations. This is two valves for, per cylinder, and uh, the newest stuff is going to be four valves per cylinder. Still two cams. All of them are chain-driven, and uh, this is sort of the base for the W engine. The, uh, the entire time when you're, when you're looking at this stuff, and, and same with Jason's whiteboard stuff, think of two VR6s laid in a V themselves, and uh, you basically have a W, a W engine, W12 in this case. Uh, you know the the Passat had the W8, uh, and and we run the uh, W12 through a lot of the the Volkswagen family, Volkswagen, Audi, Bentley, uh, Lamborghini, on up, uh, Bugatti. So there's a there's a ton of cars, relatively, <laughs> with uh, with the W engine in it. So let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, this VR6 block. All right, we are all comfy and cozy here with this 2.8 liter VR6 block. Um, this is a 15 degree V. A traditional V engine would be about 90 degrees or some are 60 degrees. And then when we get into the newer direct injection, they actually even narrow the, uh, the V even more to 10.6 degrees. I'm gonna lay a screwdriver here in the cylinder bore. And you can actually see that angle there, the way the screwdriver comes out of the bore isn't perfectly uh, perpendicular. If it were perpendicular, it would look more like this. So this is a good demonstration of how different the angle is on a VR6 block versus traditional, traditional engine block. You can actually see here the difference in combustion chamber where it's wider on the outside, narrower on the inside. You can see it over here as well. This line is actually where the, uh, the top piston ring stops. Now this VR6, uh, like I said, has been been through some rough times, so I don't know that this one will ever see uh, see an engine bay anymore. But uh, 
I'm going to also show you guys what it looks like when the piston comes up to the, uh, to the top of its stroke. I have cylinder two piston up at the top of the stroke here. Um, if you look, you can see, see that line right there. That's where the top ring stops, but the piston actually stops here. So that dark area inside the cylinder bore is actually the full combustion chamber. Um, you can really see how the angle of the piston comes as I bring it up out of the bore and above the deck of the block. And uh, that really is a good, good demonstration of how much of an angle this, this piston comes up at versus the uh, traditional style um, engine block. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the cylinder head next. With this particular cylinder head, this is a two valve per cylinder head, the, again the early 2.8 liter VR6. You'll notice that we have two different shape of intake runners. We have round ones and oval ones. The round ones are actually for the odd cylinders, one, three, five, um, and they're the longer runners. So this one right here is actually for cylinder three. The oval ones are the even cylinders, which are short intake, um, two, four, six. So when we have one with a long intake runner, we actually have a short exhaust runner coming out of the, the back of the cylinder head. Um, if it has a short intake, it has a long exhaust. And we'll see that here in a second when I rotate the cylinder head around. Um, also, this, this little hole right here is actually for a secondary air control um, inlet, which is uh, an emissions control to help warm the catalytic converter up faster. All right, now we're looking at the exhaust side. You'll notice that it actually looks very similar to uh, the way the intake side looked. We have round ports, we have oval ports, and um, it's kind of the opposite of the way it was on the intake. We, if we had, like I said, short intake, we have a long exhaust port. If we have a long intake, we have a short exhaust port. So our short exhaust ones on this cylinder head are going to be the odd-numbered cylinders, 1, 3, and 5 and the long exhaust is going to be 246. And basically the overall air travel both into and out of the cylinder head um, is the same for every cylinder. It just depends on whether or not it's traveling further on the intake or further on the exhaust. All right, here we have a top-down view of this uh, 2.8 liter cylinder head. And the you'll notice the top camshaft is actually missing a gear. Um, they're all chain driven, but the top cam is for cylinders one, three, and five for both intake and exhaust. The lower cam is for cylinders two, four, and six, both intake and exhaust. And if you look right here, this is the intake port for cylinder one. This port flows all the way through the cylinder head to this lobe. This is where the um, intake valve is for cylinder one. To contrast, the exhaust is here and it just goes to right here for cylinder one. So that gives you a really good view of the distance air travels both into and out of the cylinder head. That's consistent on the odd cylinders at the top, and then the intake ones, or the, um, the even ones on the bottom, are the exact opposite. Here's the exhaust, it flows through to here, and here's the intake, it flows just to right there. All right, here's the bottom end look of the cylinder head. Uh, again, just like the block, this poor cylinder head has seen better days, but um, you can notice that the Intake and exhaust valves are right next to each other. Um, this one has bigger intake valves than exhaust valves. I think when we move to the uh, four valve design, they're all the same um, size, but the length changes because the way they're placed in the cylinder head. Uh, and it's, it's a flat cylinder head. The valves actually stick out just a little bit past the deck of the cylinder head. The, uh, the exhaust protrude a little more than the intake. So very cool design and um, something, like I said before, I'm a big fan of as I, as I drive one. So um, I got a lot of love for the VR. It's a cool setup. It uh, makes a, a very cool engine, a very cool exhaust note and an intake sound. So, so I'm a fan. Um, Jason, thanks for having me on the show, man. I really appreciate it. If anybody has any questions for me, feel free to shoot me an email, charles at humblemechanic.com. And uh, I'll try and help you guys out as best I can. Anyway, I'm going to ship it back to Jason and uh, see you guys next time. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those below. And please check out the Humble Mechanics YouTube channel. I'll include the link in the video description. And I'll close out with this soundbite of a VR6 engine.